Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. You are now watching Shainaz Al Asrawi, and that's the English version of the CCNA course. A uh, happy Eid, everyone! Uh, we are here on uh, our second day of the Eid, and uh, our video today is about TCP and UDP protocols, the difference between them, and when when to use each one of them. First, let's open our TCP over IP model to clarify some things. The TCP over IP model consists of seven layers. The TCP and UDP protocols are on the transport layer. After we know what we are gonna do at the destination through the application layer and the application layer protocol, the data is converted to ones and zeros at the presentation layer and the session layer is responsible for opening, maintaining and closing the session to the destination. The encapsulation process, which we also m mentioned earlier in previous videos, starts at the transport layer. All the previous layers have no encapsulation, and we said before encapsulation is adding a header to the data. This header is responsible for the data to be delivered uh, to the destination in a a good way or a, a complete fashion or uh, to 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 say what the protocols used in this process as we will discuss uh, in this course and in this video so the transport layer here have encapsulation the protocol responsible for the encapsulation as the transport layer may be tcp or udp so TCP may be the protocol responsible for the encapsulation at the, the transport layer or the UDP protocol. Depends on what? It depends on the protocol used at the application layer. As we discussed earlier, the application layer contains the protocols, the 1024 protocols or well-known protocols at the application layer and each one of them may be TCP or maybe UDP. For example, you may be uh, going to the destination, here you are the source and you are going to the destination for browsing. If you are going for browsing, then the protocol you are using is uh, HTTP or HTTPS. The HTTP and HTTPS are, trans are application layer protocols. HTTP is number 80. As you can see, they are, uh, it's from the 1024 protocols or the 1024 protocols and the HTTPS is of port uh, 443 and also it's from the well-known protocols or, 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 as we see, or as we say about them, uh, it's from the uh, 1024 well-known ports. Okay, so the transport the transmitter here will use http http is a tcp protocol tcp means when the transmitter here sends the data it waits for an acknowledgement from the receiver to continue sending the data if the transmitter is dealing with another application as it's sending uh, voice or uh, video not video like uh, film and the receiver here is downloading the film no i mean video streaming uh, they are uh, making a video call okay so the protocol here is called rtp rtp is real time protocol real time protocol is a udp protocol udp means that when the transmitter sends the data it sends the data and the receiver does not need to send an acknowledgement of the data. The acknowledgement is a packet or a frame which indicates that the data was received totally and completely and without errors. So TCP works with acknowledgement technique which means that the data must be transmitted complete and without errors but the udp protocol is for the applications where the data needs to be transmitted fast that's it fast it it is concerned with the speed 
of data transmission. It needs data to be transmitted very fast and it does not look to any other aspects of the data as if the data is uh, transmitted uh, uh, not complete or with errors or uh, if uh, some frames are uh, or some segments here you say about the data address as a transport layer we call it a segment because data is uh, divided to several parts and each part of them is called the segment and each segment contains the ports or the port number of the transmitter and of the receiver so the, the TCP protocol is concerned with delivering the data complete and sound but the UDP protocol is concerned with delivering the data fast okay it's not a matter of which one of them is better no not not one of them is better they both have their applications the TCP protocols have certain applications and the UDP protocol have certain applications some applications need TCP and some application need UDP okay what next as you can see here that's the TCP operation how TCP protocol works the TCP protocol if you have a client and you have, and you have a server first there are sync packets as we say it's called a connection oriented protocol you can say here connection oriented connection oriented means before the client starts sending the data or before the receiver starts sending the data there must be a connection established between the source and the destination this connection means synchronization the client is waiting for the receiver it knows that it wants to send it some data and the same here for the for the server so that's called a connection oriented uh, communication and this connection here is called a three-way handshake three-way handshake means I think like I am requesting to send data and here you give me permission and you think with me also yeah, yeah like you send me a request because I'm going to send data also so here you give me a, a permission to send you data and you request from me to give you a permission to send you data so that's here is called a three-way handshake if the three-way handshake was successful so we are now waiting for each other to deliver data then the data starts to be transmitted the data here transmitted with the concept of if any data was dropped it must be retransmitted and if duplicate segments are received at the, at the receiver here they are dropped and when the data is sent they are sent with a sequence number as they are sent uh, with this that is segment one that segment two that segment three and so on and at the receiver these seg segments are ordered uh, so they are in the correct order after data transmission is complete here we have a finish a four-way handshake I am saying I finished sending the data and the server starts to say that okay it uh, gives me an acknowledgement that he knows I th that I finished uh, sending the, d the data and he sends me a finish of his own and then I send an acknowledgement that I know that the session was closed so there is open there is maintain and there is close that's the operation of the TCP protocol here you can see that when data is sent if any data was dropped an acknowledgement is sent that the data must be retransmitted also we have a window size what's a window size the transmitter and the receiver say to each other what's the perfect amount of data that I can send and you can process without problems so that's the window size so the window size can vary throughout the transmission or throughout the connection 
if the drop rate is very large the window size will decrease so it maintains that the data transmitted is received perfectly okay so here is a window size and there is a retransmission if the data is dropped this doesn't show the sync and the finish but they are there okay in the UDP operation you must know that there is no sync no connection at the beginning no finish no segmentation uh, like uh, there are segments of course because UDP is a transport layer protocol but there is no window size uh, I send the whole data if I have 100 segments I send the 100 segments if I have uh, 10 segments I send the 10 segments I do not wait for acknowledgments and I don't wait for uh, retransmission if data is dropped so it's dropped so that's the UDP operation okay so UDP operation here is called connection less there is no connection no sync at the beginning or no finish at the end no window size discussed no uh, retransmission happens so the data here is really transmitted faster than TCP uh, but it's drop browned more okay that's here the UDP operation which is a connectionless operation connectionless here is not a disadvantage it's just uh, a property okay because as I said before some protocols in the application layer needs UDP to be the protocol dealing with them like RTP if you are watching uh, a match or uh, if you are making a video call or a voice call you need this call to be f as fast as possible you depend on the internet uh, connection you have you do not depend on the protocol to send the data because if you depend on the protocol the connection will be very very slow every dropped uh, segment will be retransmitted and you will wait for this retransmission to, to, uh, to occur uh, if uh, data is uh, uh, sent in a, a, a wrong order then you will wait for the receiver to reorder the data for you to deal with or before it shows it to you so so uh, all of this uh, causes a delay in the data and a delay in the connection which UDP does not present okay here here is a comparison table between TCP and UDP as I said before TCP is reliable UDP unreliable and that's not an advantage and that's not a disadvantage it ju it's just a property in TCP you rely on TCP in UDP you do not rely on UDP you rely on your internet connection or your network connection TCP is connection oriented UDP is connectionless uh, TCP have segment retransmission flow control through windowing like we we discussed here that we are gonna uh, send um, four segments each time and wait for processing that's called windowing in UDP no windowing I send all the data once and no retransmission I do not wait for acknowledgments and I do not retransmit dropped segments here we have segment sequencing like uh, that segment 1, segment 2, segment 3 UDP do not have sequencing TCP have acknowledgments UDP don't have acknowledgments okay uh, an important thing here too is the port numbers dealing in TCP and UDP these port numbers are from the well-known range let me tell you something here first what is the port number what's the well-known port numbers what's the other uh, port numbers present say here you have three types of port numbers I have the well-known ports I have the registered ports and I have the free ports or the automatically generated ports all of the ports are about 65,000 and more okay you have more than 65,000 ports okay the well-known ports are from 1 to 
1023. The well-known ports are the ports all the devices deal with. Any device with an operating system which deals with the network knows the well-known ports or uh, is the well-known ports are defined on this device through the operating system. The operating system when it was first set up on this device it had the 1024 ports defined as well, as well. The registered ports are from 1024 to more than um, something like 40,000 or some such okay more than 40,000 okay and more the registered ports are for for special applications applications that not all people deal with like I'm using whatsapp so I have the port of whatsapp not everyone have this port uh, I'm using uh, SQL server so I have the uh, port of SQL server so the device knows the port uh, after it is uh, the, the application is set up or after it starts dealing with the uh, uh, with the application if I'm not dealing with this application I'm not dealing with its port the free range is from more than uh, uh, 40,000 to the end which is more than 65,000 this range is for the uh, devices or the users, normal users. So the normal user, when it starts dealing with a server or, or dealing with a destination, it generates a port number as a source port because a segment contains a source port and it contains a destination port. Destination port. The source port is of the source and the destination port is of the destination which is normally the server I'm pl I'm trying to contact okay so the source port will be from the free range because I'm not a server but the destination port most of the time is of the server which is a well-known or a registered port well-known or registered according to the uh, application I'm trying to connect to okay like if I'm browsing we return here to the other presentation if I'm a user and I'm trying to browse the internet so if I am gonna try to browse so I'm the source and the server which contains the site I'm trying to reach is the receiver he is a well-known port of 80 I'm a random port. My operating system generates this port for me to start contacting the receiver. Okay, here. So I am a free port randomly generated from the operating system and is a well known port of the receiver. So here, that's why we told you here that you have a well known port, which is a source port, and you have a destination. When the server is replying, he is the source and I am the destination. He uses a source port which is well known of the service he is uh, giving and I am the receiver here and he contacts me on the free port I generated at first. So if my device generated port number uh, as uh, 50,000 and I try to contact the receiver here the receiver is replying to port 50,000 okay that's here what we are trying to say okay you must know something there's no one-way data you must know this there's no one-way data uh, the data is send and receive I am trying to contact you and you are trying to contact me. Uh, I, uh, I am sending a request and you are sending me a reply. So in all the data, sometimes I am the source, sometimes I am the destination, sometimes I am the user and sometimes I am the server. It, it's, it must be done this way. Last thing I want to tell you is the well-known ports. You have port HTTP, 
I'm gonna try to say this uh, table here you have ports HTTP and HTTPS which is SSL here uh, SSL is for uh, secure sock layer HTTP and HTTPS are web browsing ports the difference between them is SSL is port 443 it's also a TCP port but it's secure or encrypted the data carried by SSL is encrypted data but the data carried by HTTP is uh, um, unencrypted data or clear text data HTTP is for hypertext transfer protocol and SSL is for HTTPS which is hypertext transfer protocol secure okay FTP is file transfer protocol which is of download and upload its TCP port 20 and 21 okay ports SSH and Telnet are of the remote access here in the course we are gonna discuss Telnet and SSH and remote access in detail and uh, practically uh, we are we'll have a, pract a practical uh, lab for SSH and Telnet Okay, uh, SMTP and POP are the mail ports. SMTP or for, is for sending email. It's a TCP port 25. And POP is uh, POP is for post office protocol. is also a TCP port, port 110. SMTP is for sending. Or POP is for receiving. DNS is a domain name service. It's a protocol which helps me using names instead of IPs or numbers. We are gonna take an, a practice for DNS here in the course. It's UDP and it's TCP port 53. I want you to research this thing here and uh, tell me wh when do I use UDP for DNS and when do I use TCP for DNS. Uh, consider it a quiz or uh, a research leave me a comment when do we use dns as a udp port and when do you do we use dns as a tcp port try to research it or this or search for it okay tftp is for download and upload but in udp form okay when do we use it tftp is used for backup and restore not uh, uh, normal download and upload okay SNMP of uh, network management you will find that most network management protocols are UDP okay and RTP is for voice and video Th as you can see some ports are TCP some ports are UDP those are application layer protocols each one of them can be TCP or UDP at the transport layer we must know the numbers, we must know if it's TCP or UDP, and we must know the protocol. We will use this practically in the access list for security, and we are going to use it for uh, netting and uh, when to have internet access and so on. Okay, uh, that was uh, English Wednesday. As I said before, uh, Wednesdays are going to be the English course. I hope that that was useful for you and see you next week. Thank you for viewing and good luck.